Hey everybody, it's Dustin again with the WebEx Devices team. And today I'm gonna to continue uh, our series of kind of exploring macros and integrations that we have uh, for our WebEx devices. And um, it's, it's really cool to be able to do these type of videos because uh, I'm gonna talk about a feature uh, specifically uh, in regards to room booking and scheduling, but um, this is going to be a, a room release type feature or ghost meeting feature. And what I mean by that is, is uh, let me just kind of set the scene. So you're, you're returning to the office and you're going through and you're trying to find a, a room that you can use. And as you go, you're looking outside at your room booking panels or, you, you know, you go and you're trying to book a room maybe in the calendar to see what's available. And uh, all the rooms are booked. And if you're like me, sometimes you go into the office and you're going down the hall and you finally find one at the very end of the hall and, uh, you know, you, you booked it. And so you're, you're, you're treading towards it. And then as you're going by, you see all these rooms have been booked, but there's not a soul in them. And um, it's a common problem and it can happen. Um, but uh, one of the cool things that uh, we want to actually build into the room scheduling product that we have. Now, I've done some videos and demos showing you how we've got the uh, ad hoc booking and the room booking uh, features uh, coming. And we're going to add this to part of that solution. Um, but today it's not there. And um, so what we've done is, again, talking about our macros, just the, the really cool power and feature that we have with the macro engine and our APIs to be able to do very creative things. Uh, our team out of Cisco France has uh, created this macro that's, um, uh, in full disclosure, it's a little bit early in the fact that um, there is an API that we have that is not publicly available as of this recording. Um, however, uh, we do have, for those who are in EFT, the ability to get access to this. So um, this will be public uh, very shortly, but uh, so I want to throw that caveat there now. Um, but we can get people uh, who want to test this, uh, the ability to, uh, to test this today on, a, on their systems just by uh, doing a few uh, option keys. So we'll, uh, we'll digress and, and continue on with the story here. So the idea here is, is that um, you have this macro that will allow you to configure and set uh, a certain time period to where uh, when, a, when a room gets a booking and uh, if someone is uh, not there or they don't show up uh, within a certain set period of time, the idea would be that you could room release or decline uh, that booking uh, from that system, which would then free up that system to be reserved by someone else. So if you do have someone that has, you know, decided to book a room all day because they uh, uh, have, uh, you know, decided that they want to just have a place to camp out and then they're in there for two hours and then they leave and they're gone the rest of the day. Uh, to most people, that may seem that that uh, room is no longer available. It's not able to be reserved. Uh, so what this room booking uh, macro can do is a room release macro, uh, sorry, would allow you to be able to set a threshold and a set of criteria to be able to release that room automatically uh, and then allow it to be booked again for someone else to use. So um, I've kind of described it a little bit. I'm actually gonna go through and demo it uh, just like uh, usual. I'm going to demo the actual uh, macro working. And then towards the end of the video, we're gonna go through the macro and show you more about um, how uh, it will, um, uh, it works and some of the things that you can configure. So I have this set up. Um, let me go ahead and go to my uh, desktop here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to minimize this and I want to show you that uh, I've got my system over here. Now this one just for, for demo. Uh, also, those of you who haven't seen, we have a new uh, UX coming uh, and uh, this is uh, now on the beta channel for those who are in EFT uh, or you can want to check it out. You can actually go to preview and see this, but this will be coming into the next stable. Um, but I have a, a navigator kind of tied to it on the outside, kind of showing the room booking. Uh, I have my touch 10 here, which is just a regular touch 10. And then this is the screen of my uh, uh, room kit uh, plus. And you'll see that right now I have uh, no meetings booked. It's completely available. Now this would work with the ad hoc booking, but what I'm going to do here is I actually want to show you, I want to bring up uh, Outlook. I'm going to do this with like actually booking a meeting. So this could be anybody booking a meeting because this is probably more of the use case that you're going to have. So I'm gonna go through here and say, um, I like to take all the rooms and we're gonna create that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and invite my Avenger cast system. And I'm not gonna make this a Microsoft Teams meeting because uh, we don't wanna do that, right? Who, I mean, who wants to do that? 
And um, this double check, I got it from 7 to 7.30, uh, which is local time. We are, uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and change this to make it in the past a little bit. So we'll say 6, uh, 45, whoops, to 7.15. So that way we're, we're going to be in that time period for the demo. So I'm going to go ahead and send this. And you'll see I got my reminder here. This is coming up. So I just sent this inside of Outlook. Now it's going to take it just one second, and let's minimize here. And we're going to see. There we are. I like to take all the rooms. Hybrid Calendar has booked this meeting, shows it on the outside. My navigator is going to have my little uh, red light. You're going to have to trust me. It's down here. Uh, and if you look at my room calendar here on my uh, uh, Touch 10, it shows that it's uh, there and available. I like to take all the rooms. So um, while this is going now, I have actually set this up from a demo perspective to say that um, if um, no presence is detected for one minute, then to prompt um, for a, uh, a warning. So you'll see this come up here in just a second. We're going to prompt this macro is going to prompt to say, hey, this room is not occupied. We're going to give you a countdown timer, the ability to dismiss it, but say that, hey, we're going to release this room because we're not detecting anyone in here. And there's quite a few things that we can do for our detection. Um, I'm obviously styling just a little bit here because I need to give this macro time to uh, work. Um, but um, whenever you um, set these criteria, um, there's a lot of things that we can do. Like I said, we'll go through them towards the end here, but at a high level, uh, the ability to do some of our room analytics like uh, people count, and actually, here we go. So I've installed long enough for you guys to see that we are having a, a warning that's gonna be put on the display of the device. Um, and you have here uh, on the touch 10 that this room is on, seems unused. It will be self-released. Please check in if you've booked this room. So this is kind of a fail safe just to see like, um, hey, did you actually, uh, did, you know, did we mess up? Did, uh, is there actually someone in here? And our criteria that we're setting to detect presence, uh, is, it, is, it, is it incorrect? So we want to give you the ability to have kind of a, a chance to dismiss this. Now, I've stalled for another uh, 30 seconds here. And we're going down. Um, and once this gets down to zero, what will happen is, is this macro will um, use this new API we have, which will allow us to decline that booking, uh, send a decline to the booking system. And once we do that, uh, it will remove this booking. And then we'll actually go up here. And while I'm before that does that, I'm going to bring this back up. And um, you'll see that um, on this, um, I've got uh, the, the meeting here now. I don't have that calendar showing here, but what you will see is that right there deleted that booking. It now says the room is available, and that will actually go to that room's calendar and actually show that it's uh, and actually uh, decline it from the actual Exchange or Office 365 calendar, uh, or Google Calendar. Um, but it will actually decline it, and um, now that that resource becomes free again. So someone else can now come in, check that calendar, or reserve this room on top of it. Uh, and it'll be uh, back to being available again. So I'm going to pause the video right here uh, and get set up, and then we're actually going to go through some of the uh, technical uh, nuances to how this works. So I hope you enjoyed. Okay, we're back, and now we're going to go through the actual macro itself, and so I can give you guys a little bit of an idea of how this works from a technical level. So again, thank you to the Cisco France uh, team and collaboration uh, for, for creating this, but um, the idea behind this is that uh, the room release macro is going to detect if there's a booking. So anytime you reserve a room, we have a booking. There's an API that you can uh, use to kind of listen for that kind of event. And when we do that, um, that starts a series of, uh, of things that will happen, basically, whether or not uh, uh, when we detect a room. So I'm going to come up here and show you. Uh, where we have this. Okay. So here we are, booking five uh, has been detected. So this is part of my test. So I detected a, a booking, and that's when the presence detection will actually start. Uh, and we started a timer, um, and that's then where we got the, uh, the countdown. Um, and then the room status update was empty. So uh, we start the empty countdown for the delete of the booking. We move here, and then you see that once uh, that minute had passed from the countdown, no presence detected, so the booking has been removed from this device. So this is kind of a, a logging feature, kind of showing you how that's working. Now, one of the things you can do here is, is that this is the section that you can edit and customize because there's different reasons that you may want to have um, for you know, what you want to, to do from um, uh, your, your criteria to determine if it's booking or not. 
So one example, um, well, let's just go through. So you can say use sound. So right now I say false. Um, you could set this to true. So that way, if it is a closed room um, and there's, uh, you, you can kind of set the, the volume detect level is what will trigger this as being occupied. So currently set to 50, but this will be using the ambient noise kind of uh, detection to determine, you know, hey, if there's noise or people moving around talking, this could be a trigger to say, hey, this room's occupied. That could provide false positives, especially if it's a noisy room where you have, uh, you know, things going on uh, in regards to music, whatever. So this may not be something that you want to use, but if you do, you would just set this value to true. Um, active calls. This is obviously one we would have set to true because if you're in a call, that would be a reason to say this uh, device is, uh, this room is occupied because it's in a call. So, but there may be a use case where you don't have that or something is in a call 24 seven, you can set that to false. Uh, by default, we have that set to true. Um, sending and receiving content. Um, this also could be another criteria for you to say that this is being uh, used. So maybe someone's in there using it as a presentation, um, you know, screen, and maybe they're not making a lot of noise. You don't have the sound turned on, whatever. Another criteria that you could set to allow this to uh, determine whether or not the room is occupied. So use people count only. Now, I set this one to true because um, this is this is when you don't wanna trust ultrasound. So sometimes, you know, ultrasound can give some false positives or or wake based off of, you know, movement, uh, especially if you have a fan in the room or a, a plant or something that's got something that's, you know, kind of moving around and causing some uh, ultrasound uh, type presence. Um, I did this because this is, the device is in the room. I have the camera po pointed away from me. So if I tell it to use people count only, which I set to true, by default, we have this on false. Only if the, the camera detects a person or a face, uh, someone in the room, will that trigger the fact that someone is there. Um, whenever you say um, use uh, presence and count, um, so this will require both to detect presence. So again, allowing you to have some customization. This is a good one because um, when we have people outside the room that can be detected by the camera, and this is a, like we have some people that have buildings with glass walls, people walk by. Um, it may not be enough to trigger presence, people presence via ultrasound, but it would be able to pick up a face. So if you want to use um, both of these, uh, then this may be required to, to, um, to detect, uh, you know, have both of those as criteria in order to say, yes, this room is occupied. So that way you do not get those false positives whenever someone walks by the room. And then obviously um, using GUI interaction, that means if someone interacts with the device, touches it at all, uh, we have, you know, detected uh, touches on the device, that would mean someone's in there. Um, and this by default is set to true as well. So again, all of these um, variables are customizable to you. Um, and whenever you set them, um, that will determine what the macro is going to do. Um, whenever you uh, first in, uh, install this, uh, and I'm gonna turn this off and then turn it right back on. This is enabling the presence detection. Um, sound detection is disabled. Uh, presence detection is enabled, is, uh, is enabled, and ultrasound detection is disabled. So this kind of gives you an idea of what's actually happening in that regard. And I'm gonna go ahead and just um, do another little um, booking here. Uh, let me just, uh, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just do it here. I'm gonna go ahead and book this room now just so you can kind of see. So when I say book, you'll see that this goes through and immediately it's got the booking detected. It's starting to do its detection. Right now it's saying room is occupied false based off of all of the criteria I said. I said only if it detected someone's face. The timer is starting down. It's telling you about the sound levels. Um, and uh, because I am talking, you're starting to see that, you know, this is uh, varying a little bit. Um, one thing that I'm going to do here is just to kind of show you an idea of how it would trigger a show presence is I'm gonna go to the room calendar here. Uh, actually, this one is let's see, booked. Let's let that finish uh, organizing there, but I wanna turn this presence to the section off. And let's go back to my device. Oh, my uh, booking request failed. Um, so apologies on that, but let me just go ahead and turn this back on. Actually, let me say you sound true. And I'm gonna resave that. 
So sound detection is enabled. I now have that set to use as a variable for presence detection. And this is um, my uh, room booking uh, or ad hoc booking was uh, messed up, but what this will do is still kind of give you a demo of how it's working here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And you're gonna see that uh, the bookings detected, um, occupied is now true. Why? Because I'm using sound. Um, so that's the only thing I changed. And now my uh, room occupancy is uh, set to true. So my timer is not counting down in regards to um, uh, the uh, still occupied. So it's still doing its check. So it's making sure that uh, I'm here. As soon as I uh, would do that uh, or, or set to false, um, then um, it would basically stop this timer every time because I would not be... Uh, um, uh, actually, it's uh, sound level is 50. So I'm just right there at the threshold. <laughs> um, so it's, um, you know, if I was louder and I'm making enough noise, um, it will um, eventually say that to be back to true. Uh, sound level above 50 was false because I was only at 50. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm really loud. Uh, so that way we can get uh, the uh, sound level above 50 at the time um, whenever I'm sitting here talking. Uh, but my thing's behind me here. Uh, so room is occupied is true because my sound level went to 54, 55, 54. So with all that being said, um, I hope that this was uh, something that was useful for you. I'm very excited about this. Great job with the team. We're going to have this on roomos.cisco.com. Uh, and I'm also going to do some cool videos to showing you how you can install uh, macros from that website as well as a couple of videos coming pretty soon to show you how you can manage your macros and deploy them uh, with a lot of tools that we have available today, uh, both from using the CloudX API. Uh, I'm also going to do a video to talk about CE Deploy uh, to allow you to manage these macros at larger scale. And then I have some great, uh, some early demos and some pre-release stuff to show you how you're going to be able to manage your macros from Control Hub. So subscribe to the channel, um, comment below if you have any questions, and I hope that you enjoyed this. And uh, Hope you're looking forward to uh, all of the series that we have here and the work that we're doing. So thanks, and we'll see you next time.